Yeah, welcome back, everybody. You know, folks are still talking about the latest class inducted Saturday to Montana's Football Hall of Fame. If you were there, you heard some great stories. If you weren't, it's easy to see why this one was a crowd pleaser. Q2's Casey Conlon shares it. Sam Jankovic has held many titles, player, coach, athletic director, CEO, but let's just call him what he really is, the most interesting man in the Montana football world. It started where so many great stories do, in the heart of Butte. Everything I have in my life, I really owe it to Butte. If you go by a high school parking lot today, there's 1,010 cars. When I was going to high school in Butte, you didn't see one car. None of us owned one. So we spent all of our time playing football on the streets. Jankovic was good enough to earn a scholarship in Missoula, but a knee injury cut his playing career short. So he turned to the next best thing, coaching. He started as a Grizz grad assistant, then coached the West team in the Shrine game, and eventually made his way back to Butte, where he led the Bulldogs to a state title in 1967. My whole career, my whole life, was based on being the head football coach at Butte High and the success we had. Jankovic then got back into the college ranks, following Butte native Jim Sweeney to Washington State as Sweeney's defensive coordinator. But that was the last stop for Sam Jankovic, the coach. In 1972, he left the sideline to become the Cougars' assistant athletic director and got the big job four years later. Nothing in its own way was more challenging than Washington State because we were the underdogs and for the most part of our career, all the games we played were out of off the campus. Washington State played its football games in Spokane back then. Jankovic knew step one was getting them back to Pullman. So in 1979, he had Martin Stadium's capacity increased from 26,000 to almost 40,000. And the rest was history. Jankovic loved Wazoo. He was happy there. But then a big fish came calling, again and again. Well, that kind of tells you I'm not very smart. I wanted to turn down that job, and I tried so many different times. And thank God a guy by the name of Dave Lieberman, who was the assistant to the president, at the University of Miami. When I got back from a trip to Montenegro, Yugoslavia, my son Mike was waiting there with a phone call from David and said, Mike, I don't want to call him. And so he said, Dad, you have to. As soon as I was there, it dawned on me, this could be the USC of the East Coast. Prior to Jankovic's arrival, Miami had won one bowl game in 15 years. The year he got there in 1983, they won the national championship and then won two more in the 80s as the most dominant program in college football. As far as the opportunity to really succeed and have an impact, Miami was it. And there was pressure there, because if you were average or no good, you would fall on your face overnight. And if you gave them the big event, there weren't enough tickets available for all the people who wanted them. Miami's biggest rival in those days was Notre Dame, culminating in a 1988 game that coined the phrase Catholics versus convicts. Besides the Cats and Grizz, there are more Notre Dame fans in Butte than likely any other school. But Jankovic knew he was on the right side. Well, heck, Notre Dame had more convicts than we had. But Jed, that wasn't hard for me because when I was Butte High, we had a horrible rivalry with Butte Central. And in the four years I was a coach, Central never scored a point on us. So I always loved competing against Notre Dame and the Catholics. While football made the headlines, Jankovic says his biggest accomplishment was bringing men's basketball back to Miami after a 15-year hiatus. He's always been a college hoops fan, still follows it today. When asked who he's rooting for to win this weekend's Final Four, he sided with the Catholics this time. You can't help but love what they've done at Loyola of Chicago. And I would see, I'd think, see them win if they could because of that nun that's out there clapping all the time and 98 years old, and those players play their heart out for her. He can't root for Miami after all. They got beat on a first round buzzer beater by Loyola Chicago. What else would you expect in the life of the most interesting man in Montana? How lucky I am from being from Montana. And Casey Kong, MTN Sports. Oh, he was fun to listen to Saturday night. And if that football timeline wasn't enough for you, after his run at Miami, the most interesting man became CEO of the New England Patriots for two years, starting in 1990. He also has his own Wikipedia page. 
That'll do it for sports. We're back in just a moment.